My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. My native country, the land of the noble free, thy name I love. I love thy rocks and rills, thy woods and templed hills, my heart with rapture fills like that above. Let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees sweet freedom's song. Let mortal tongues awake, let all that breathe partake, let rocks their silence break, the sound prolong. Our fathers, God, to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. <clears throat> Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. Oh, yes. I I sang, but really, <clears throat> my heart was praying. That's a song that <clears throat> comes from the heart that you pray. Well, welcome to the 4th of July, one of America's finest, finest holidays. I love it. I love the summer. <laughs> I love everything blooming and the leaves all on the trees and, and I... Yesterday was my birthday. That was great. Friends and relatives were there, and my daughter and son-in-law came up from Florida. Surprised me. I didn't know they were coming. It was a great day. And so my heart is very joyful this morning. And so I got up my favorite cup with the flag on it also. I mean, we're just, the whole, the whole screen is flag, flag, flag. As we honor this country that the Lord raised up and raised us up to get the gospel out. We are the carriers of the gospel. A lot of other countries, a lot of other people are too, but America has a foundation in spreading the gospel. All those original patriots, we honor them, right? Wow, some of them most of them, I'm sure, risking their lives to come across the great ocean in boats, ships, some of them not very big, pictures that I've seen. So hallelujah, happy birthday, America. Let's continue on with the gospel here in Second Kings, Beit Melechim, chapter 23, picking up with verse 31, chapter 23, 31. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Connie, if you would put on there, uh, you wrote to me and told me what Yahweh has meant. It has a beautiful meeting. Maybe you could put that on there for all of our brothers and sisters to have documented there on the screen. So let's pick up with Yahweh has was 23 years old when he became king and he only reigned three months in Yerushalayim. His mother's name was Hamatol, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libnach, and he did evil. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. Now Pharaoh Necho put him in prison at Ribla, in the land of Hamat, that he might not reign in Jerusalem, and he imposed on the land a tribute of 100 talents of silver and a talent of gold. And then Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king 
in place of his father, Josiah, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. And Pharaoh took Jehoahaz and went to Egypt, and he died there. So Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give money according to the command of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold from the people of the land, from everyone, according to his assessment, <clears throat> to give it to Pharaoh Necho. So now, once again, they have people lording it over them. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebudah, the daughter of Pediach of Rumah. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. So, wow, it is a time of evil reigning. <clears throat> We move along to chapter 24 of 2 Kings. In his day, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. And then he turned and he rebelled against him, and the Lord sent against him raiding bands of Chaldeans, bands of Syrians, bands of Moabites, and bands of the people of Ammon. <clears throat> wow. Now that was what I call besieged. He sent them against Judah to destroy it. Remember, I think we read that yesterday, where he said, well, he'd just destroy it. According to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servants, the prophets, surely at the commandment of the Lord this came, upon Judah to remove them from his sight because of the sins. It's always the sins, y'all. Remove them from his sight because of the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he had done, and also because of the innocent blood that he had shed. Got that? We're talking about abortion. We're talking about killing babies. Innocent blood. Wake up, America. Stand up and fight this situation. <clears throat> For he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Look at that. That's the whole reason all this is happening. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim rested with his fathers, and then Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his place. <clears throat> Pardon me if there's not really good pronunciation from me. And the king of Egypt did not come out of his land anymore, for the king of Babylon had taken all that belonged to the king of Egypt from the brook of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. Three months. And if you were 18, how prepared would you be? being brought up under evil. His mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of el Natan of Jerusalem. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. And at that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city as his servants were besieging it. And then Jehoiachin, king of Judah, his mother, his servants, his princes, and his officers went out to the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon, in the eighth year of his reign, took him prisoner. 
and he carried out from there all the treasures. Here we go again. They bring the treasures in, then they sin, then they are besieged, they give it all away to them. It Sin is a vicious cycle, isn't it? And we need to break any sin. We need to be sick and tired of whatever keeps happening that we know is not right. We know God's not happy. You're not happy. And we need to stand up with the word of God against anything that is holding us back. So here we go again. He carried out from there all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. And he cut in pieces all the articles of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord. As the Lord had said, also he carried into captivity all Jerusalem, all the captains and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and the smiths take away all the trades. <clears throat> then you're really in big trouble. None remained except the poorest people of the land. And he carried Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. The king's mother, the king's wives, his officers, and the mighty of the land he carried into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. All the valiant men, 7,000, and craftsmen and smiths, 1,000, all who were strong and fit for war. These the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. <clears throat> and then the king of Babylon made Mataniah, Yehoachin's uncle, king in his place, and he changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamatol, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He also did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, this happened in Jerusalem and Judah, that he finally cast them out of his presence. Wow, what a sad time. <clears throat> and then Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. We move along to chapter 25. Let me just grab a sip here. Now it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and encamped against it, and they built a siege wall against it all around. Can you imagine how their hearts were failing inside, hearing all that being built? <clears throat> so the city was besieged until the 11th year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. No food. And then the city wall was broken through, and all the men of war fled at the site by way of the gate between two walls, which was by the king's garden. Even though the Chaldeans were still encamped all around against the city, and the king went by way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king, and they overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All his army was scattered from him. So they took the king, and they brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and they pronounced judgment on him. And then they killed 
the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, put out the eyes of Zedekiah, bound him with bronze fetters, and took him to Babylon. Oh, what a horrible, horrible ending. The last thing he remembers seeing before his eyes were put out was all the sons were killed. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, <coughs> came to Jerusalem. He burned the house of the Lord and the king's house, all the houses of Jerusalem, that is, all the houses of the great. He burned with fire. Check out Kathy's graphics. Check them out. Beautiful graphics. And all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the captain of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem all around. And then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive the rest of the people who remained in the city and the defectors who had deserted to the king of Babylon with the rest of the multitude. But the captain of the guard left some of the poor of the land as vine dressers and farmers. The bronze pillars that were in the house of the Lord and the carts in the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke into pieces and they carried their bronze to Babylon. They also took away the pots, the shovels, the trimmers, the spoons, and the bronze utensils with which the priest ministered, the fire pans and the basins, the things of solid gold and solid silver, the captain of the guard took away. The two pillars, one sea and the carts, which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the bronze of all these articles was beyond measure. The height of one pillar was 18 cubits, and the capital on it was of bronze. The height of the capital was three cubits, and the network and pomegranates all around the capital were all of bronze. The second pillar was the same with a network, and the captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three doorkeepers. He also took out of the city an officer who had charge of the men of war, five men of the king's close associates who were found in the city, the chief recruiting officer of the army who mustered the people of the land, and 60 men of the people of the land who were found in the city. So Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, took these, and he brought them to the king of Babylon at Ribla. And then the king of Babylon struck them and put them to death at Ribla in the land of Hamat. Thus Judah was carried away captive from its own land. And then he made Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, 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 the son of Shaphan, governor over the people who remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left. Now when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, <clears throat> heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Ishmael, the son of Nataniah, Yohanan, the son of Keriah, Seriah, the son of Tanhumet, the Neptophahite, 
and Yassania, the son of a Machathite, they and their men. And Gedaliah took an oath before them and their men and said to them, Do not be afraid of the servants of the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But, there's always a but, but, it happened in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nataniah, the son of Elishama, the royal family, came with ten men and struck and killed Gadaliah, the Jews, as well as the Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. And all the people, small and great, and the captains of the armies, they arose and they went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. Now it came to pass in the 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 27th day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, released Jehoiachin, king of Judah, from prison. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a more prominent seat than those of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin changed from his prison garments, and he ate bread regularly before the king all the days of his life. And as for his provisions, there was a regular ration given him by the king, a portion for each day, all the days of his life. Wow! What a blessing from the Lord! <clears throat> what a blessing! Mm. That was one one huge bunch of history, wasn't it? And let's move along to the New Testament, and we will read from the book of Acts. Hallelujah. The book of Acts, the beginning of the church, all of those strong people who risked their lives. Now it happened here in Acts 22, and I am picking up with verse 17. Now it happened when Paul returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, that I was in a trance. And I saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. So I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by. I was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. And then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And they listened to him until this word. The people are listening. And then look what happens when they hear him say that. And then they raised their voices and they said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. And then as they cried out and they tore off their clothes and they threw dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under scourging so that he might know why they shouted so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? Woo! And apparently those words really pierced the air. When the centurion heard that, 
he went and he told the commander, saying, Take care what you do, for this man is a Roman. And then the commander came and he said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? And he said, Yes. And the commander answered, With a large sum I obtained this citizenship. He doesn't believe him. And Paul said, But I was born a citizen. And then immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. And the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman. And because he had bound him the next day, because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the Jews, he released him from his bonds and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. And we move along to chapter 23 of the book of Acts. <clears throat> and then Paul, looking earnestly at the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. And then Paul said to them, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Wow, very brave. For you sit to judge me according to the law. And do you command me to be struck contrary to the law? And those who stood by said, Do you revile God's high priest? And then Paul said, I did not know, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. And we find that in Exodus twenty-two twenty-eight. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, oh, okay, he uses this. He cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, concerning the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am being judged. Oh, that was the hot subject. And when he had said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. For Sadducees say that there is no resurrection and no angel or spirit. But the Pharisees confess both. And then there arose a loud outcry. And the scribes of the Pharisees' party arose, and they protested, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Now when there arose a great dissension, the commander, fearing lest Paul might be pulled to pieces by them, he commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them and bring him into the barracks. Wow. <clears throat> Rescue. Rescue. Because the God of all is looking down on the situation, isn't he? Amen. Okay, we have just begun to read all of the Psalms again. We read clear to 150, and now for the rest of this year, we will be blessed to read them again. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. And if you're just tuning in, why don't you, after we're over, go and read Psalm 1, 
And then you will be encouraged that you have started. You, that you have started. Psalm 2, why do the nations rage? And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds and pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision, and then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. We would say Zion, Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, and that's S-O-N. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. <clears throat> when his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him blessed and aren't we we are the most blessed people on the earth so we need to knock off all the grumbling and the complaining don't we and we need to speak wisdom we need to speak joy that others who are discouraged can pick up on the joy we need to count every moment of our life as ministers of him, ministers of this word that he has so graciously given us, given us his word, and we still freely have it in our hands. So let's be greatly encouraged. Let's let all that troubles us, all the problems, all the discouragements, let's let them just be reduced in the joy of his word, the encouragement of his word. <clears throat> and we wrap up today's wonderful reading with Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 18, verse 13. Proverbs 18, 13. This is a goodie. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. That would be pure opinion then, wouldn't it? He is answering this matter before he's even heard it from the people who are involved. Oh, that happens all the time, doesn't it? He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. Wow, let's, let's meditate on all of this incredible word of God. Let's pray on this beautiful July 4. Beautiful in every way. Even if you're going through a really hard struggle, be encouraged on this day. This nation has been blessed of God. We, each one of us, have been blessed. Even through all the trials, all the sicknesses, diseases, 
Let's take it all to the Lord and give it to him and take on his spirit. Let Holy Spirit direct us today. Let us absolutely reach out and take a hold of peace. Let this day be a red letter day, a Jesus filled day. Stop and think at the beginning of this day. Who do you need to call and encourage and just say hello? Haven't seen you for quite a while. Hi, how are you doing? Let's be a blessing in every way that we can. And furthermore, it's more fun. <laughs> it's a whole lot more fun than being in our self-pity and our discouragement. Let's sing. Let's do a little dance in our kitchen. Let's make this a joyful day. I encourage you. Father God, we want to thank you so much for your word. Oh my. So much to learn from your word. So much to enjoy. So much to, to fill us with your peace. With your joy. We want to thank you, Lord. That here we are. Whether you're hearing it at the recording early in the morning or maybe you're listening looking at it in the middle of the night whenever it is please know that the Lord Jesus loves you he gave his life he gave his blood he let them beat him beat his back to a pulp these red stripes of the flag that you see behind me. Precious Lord, I want to thank you that that's what our flag looks like. I want to thank you that we can look at the flag and we can see the red blood stripes of Jesus' back and in between the white of a righteous life. We can walk a righteous life. And we want to thank you for that, precious God. We don't take it lightly. You have blessed us. Thank you, Lord, for the big blessings and, and the little tiny ones. Let us be grateful, y'all. Let us be grateful. Let us sing. Let us hum our national anthem. Such good words we are singing. Wonderful words. Father God, we hold up Jerusalem. We hold up Israel. And Lord, I, I watched such a, a sweet <clears throat> video this morning from Julie Stahl from CBN standing in front of a plane in Ethiopia bringing more of God's people more back home. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Lord, it, it was said that many of them had waited 20 years more been wanting to come. And now they're on that plane. Can you imagine how their hearts are pounding? Oh, Father God, we thank you for this. We thank you and bless you for redeeming your people. You promised it has been prophesied and you are doing it. Lord, help all of us to give, to give that extra money to ministries like this who are bringing the people home. Let's bring them home while there's a measure of peace to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Let's, let's think on that and let's, Let's get serious about in our hearts about what we can give, what, what we can do to help. <clears throat> it's up to us, the church. Inspire us, Lord, and help us. Help us to be generous. Help us, Lord, to have your generous spirit in our hearts. We thank you for the peace that we are enjoying in America. Oh, Father God, 
We are free today to go wherever we want, gather together, do whatever we want, celebrate, eat, and fellowship, laugh, and enjoy. We want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for this incredible blessing. We don't take it lightly, Lord. Father God, we hold up all of the leadership of America. <clears throat> and right now, it's like you're giving us a little spanking here. And we repent. We repent. For innocent blood has been shed. Under our lives, our watch. And many of us have, have only complained about it. Oh, how terrible it is. But we haven't taken action to turn it around. To put a stop to it. Father God, inspire us to get connected with our representatives. Get behind them. Not complain about them, but get behind them. And express that we're with them. What we want done. What, what is wrong? What needs to be corrected? Let's use our freedom that we celebrate today. Let's use it. Let's not just eat and drink and have pleasure, but let's use it to his glory, to redeem the lost, to take the prisoners out of terrible places, bring those home to Israel who long to go home. They are Jews and the land has been promised to them. Help us, Lord. I cry out to you. Help me to give more. I have some thoughts, and I need to act upon them. I have some desires, and I, I need to act upon them. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit, to do it. Just do it. We need to get those shirts out of the bottom of the drawer. Just do it. And let those words inspire us. Father God, we're asking that many be saved in government, high in government, in every state and in Washington, D.C. Let the Holy Ghost breathe through, blow through at a level like never before. And let many be saved. Let many turn around from where they are in their lives and in their thinking and in their working and let them take stock of where we are and say, wait a minute, there are some things that need to be corrected. Father God, help us now to support crisis pregnancy centers. If you have one in your town, your city, and I have one here in Charleston, we need to give to them. There's been a change in the law. We need to encourage now, rush into the gap. Father God, inspire us. Holy Ghost, inspire us to do good works in your name, to save life, to honor and cherish life, to speak good of it, to help ladies and young men who they're in trouble. Well, let's help them. Let's help them. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. I, I pray for heartbeat. I pray for heartbeat in my precious town of Port Clinton. I pray for the Crisis Pregnancy Center here in Jerusalem, in, well, Jerusalem too, but in Charleston. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, have, I have money set aside. I've purposely set it aside. I'm going to write it out. Wouldn't you believe I'm waiting for some new checks to come in? <laughs> I might just get the cash and drive it over. Father God, help us to get active in our Christian walk. I'd ask, Lord, that everybody would have a blessed day filled with good food and fun and laughter, <clears throat> praise and, and a, 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 a prayer of thanksgiving to you. Lifting you up high.
Father God, I'd ask that you would heal those who are sick. Heal those, Lord, that your sons and daughters here are holding up to you. Heal those, comfort those who've lost loved ones. Lost, whether a long time ago and they're still hurting in their hearts or recently. Father God, we cry out to you today. We cry out in joy and in thanksgiving and we cry out and lay all of the situations at the foot of your cross, believing and trusting in you and all God's people. Went ahead with your own prayers. Have a joyful day in the Lord. I love you all so very much. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.